Hi, this is Oscar Trilovsky, 12 times world champion and cancer warrior. The story starts basically in Australia, in Perth of all places, and I went over on the ferry, uh, the Rottnest ferry from uh, Fremantle across to Rottnest, and when I got off the boat, I had such a searing pain in my back, I thought, gee, I wonder if I should do this doctor race. I trained for it, I won it three times before, and I love racing the doctor, which is, which is one of the best downwind races in the world. And I got off that ferry, and because I was sitting still, the pain was excruciating. I thought, should I actually be doing this race? I've got nothing to prove. But what happened, I got into my boat, paddled a bit, and I was still painful. And I had my slops in the front of my, of my boat, and I said, okay. And I had my friend who, had a, who was going to take my slops. So I paddled up there, and he had a big boat. I threw the slops on, on board, and I thought, should I be doing this race? But the wind was blowing, the sun was shining, and I love lots of wind. I thought, okay, let me start. So off I went, and I started very slowly. I mean, it's unbelievably slow because I was in pain. And, and as I went along, it just got better and better. The winds got harder and harder, and I started catching and overtaking people. But I was still in pain, and I still pushed it hard. And then sort of about four kilometers from the end, and, and you f finish at Sorrento Beach, I decided I'm not going to kill myself to try and win the over 50s but I, I was catching everywhere which made me feel good and then I slowed down finished finished the race and within a few hours I was on my plane to uh, back to Portugal and I thought she had all these painkillers nothing had worked the pain was excruciating and it's funny I was in the Emirates uh, Airlines here Stace came to me and said no no I've got a good way to alleviate pain I said well, she I've tried everything she said, no, no, she took a two liter bottle of water, filled it up with uh, boiling hot water, and those same socks that you get on uh, the, in the business class, put two socks over the boiling water and put on my back, and suddenly, I, for the first time in maybe two months, I had a bit of relief, pain relief, I couldn't believe it. So, and I subsequently found out that if you put hot water and something hot on your, on your, it confuses the nerves, so that gave me a bit of relief. And then, I said the first thing, as I landed in port, I said, listen, I told Victor, my, my physiotherapist, I said, listen, I want to go and have an MRI. This is ridiculous. I went the next day to have an MRI, and I couldn't even lie in that chamber for more than 10 seconds without getting up and going. It's the first time that I had to push the button to say, listen, I can't, I can't, I've got to come out. Stand up, back in, stand up, and then they actually give you a drip so they can see what is going on with this, uh, whatever it was in my back. After half an hour, get all the results, and then the radiographer, not the radiologist, the radiographer comes and I said, hey, can you see anything? And she's not allowed to do this, but she said, have a look. And she showed me the photograph and the MRI. She says, yeah, it is. There was a big tumor pushing on my spinal cord. And I thought, oh, so this is going to be interesting. And it was on the 25th of November, one day before my wife's birthday. She's turning 60, and I'd organized a special a uh, getaway at, a, at a, a fantastic hotel called Six Cents on the Juro Valley. Six, seven star hotel, you know. And sat down and we knew there was something wrong. And then uh, we got the phone call. They said, no, no, no. And uh, this is a tumor. It's cancerous. And it's a secondary tumor. And it's very serious. And we phoned my friend, uh, Eric Borden is an American. I said, hey, well, what do you think about this? He said, Oscar, this is serious. Don't know how long you've got. It's a secondary tumor. You've got to find the, the, the primary tumor. At this stage, uh, Claire got very upset, cried, and said, no way. And then I had to break the news. I've got a, tomorrow is your 60th. I've got a special function. She says, no way. And she was crying so badly. We didn't tell the kids or anything like that. And I said, listen, I'm alive. I haven't had a heart attack. You've still got me, and I feel good, and I don't know what this uh, cancer is all about, but I'm alive, and we are going to celebrate your 60th, and which we did. But uh, speaking to uh, Eric, he said, so what should I do? I'm going to fly back to South Africa in three weeks' time. He said, no, no, Oscar, if, you want, if this cancer stuff, you must be around family and friends, and I suggest uh, you go to South Africa and get it checked out, get maybe a sliver taken out of your... Uh, spine where that tumor is but surround yourself with family and uh, so I said oh well I'm going through is there a problem he says no I'd actually go earlier so I really came back 
much earlier. The next two days I flew there. The kids came to say goodbye for three days and then off Claire and I went to Cape Town, straight to Grotesque here, to Professor Dunn who was going to do an operation to take a piece of this um, tumor on my back to get it analyzed to see what the actual primary cancer was. So an hour before it, uh, Eric uh, Simon said, hey, I've actually found out you don't have to have the operation. Because I'd already signed the form to say, listen, if you die and if you catch this and if you catch that, those kind of signatures, they don't, they don't take any responsibility. He says, I think I found it. You've got uh, bone marrow cancer. I said, what? So what does that mean? Multiple myeloma. I said, when can I start paddling? Next week? Two weeks? What's he going to do? Are you just going to... He said, no, it's a very long process. And that was the start of the fight to be a warrior to conquer this incurable cancer called multiple myeloma. And it was funny that the pain was still there and there was, no, there was absolutely no relief until I got morphine. And then I administered morphine for, I never forget, I had morphine every day, three times a day to kill the pain. And then I was having radiation every day for 10 days. And the radiation shrunk the tumor so it pulled off my spinal cord. I never forget, on the 25th of December, the pain finally went and I, I was off my, um, off my morphine. And then came the road of chemotherapy, chemotherapy for seven months, every week for two and a half hours having chemotherapy. And the funny thing about it, maybe it's my attitude, but it never affected me one bit. In fact, it was through the middle of lockdown. I used to finish my chemotherapy and then come straight home, have a nice lunch with a bit of wine, red and white, and uh, loved life, and just kept on uh, pursuing and, and trying to keep my life as normal as possible and going through these uh, terrible chemo days. But they didn't actually affect me at all, so I'm one of the fortunate few.